So, hello, hello everyone. Uh, my name is Inal Cardano, and today I will speak in third or fourth language already. You had in Russian, you had in Turkish, you had in Azerbaijanian, as far as I understand, and now I will talk in English. So, let's start. Um, as I already said, my name is Inal Cardano, and I'm developer advocate at uh, Wix platform. And today we will talk some kind of philosophical talk about blockchains, Bitcoin, etc. As you may notice in your agenda, there is a title, some kind of uh, blockchain gaming or some kind of that. Uh, but I'd like to talk about how blockchain changed the software development. It's more broader, it's uh, more about uh, blockchain itself. And I will uh, ask you some questions, and I hope in the end of this talk you will find some interesting things, some interesting thoughts to, talk, to think about. So let's start, let's jump in. A uh, few months ago, not, not even a few months, in the end of October, just a little bit more than one month ago, uh, Bitcoin reached 10, 10 years. And uh, as you may know, for IT, for technology, 10 years, it's a lot. It's not just like kids or some kind of, they're not kind of kid technology. It's very, very, should be very, very, very well-known technology. But, for example, in Twitter, you could see pictures like this. Just some time to understand what's the point of this picture. It just tries to show that t 10 years ago, there were four small kids like Bitcoin, Airbnb, Instagram, and Uber. 10 years after, there are three big turtles, and there is one small turtle. Of Bitcoin. Not, I think uh, we can say not only Bitcoin, but the whole blockchain is like small key. And I'd like to talk about it and I'd like to argue with this picture. How? Uh, I think all of us, at least the majority of us, want to find out how they can use blockchain find out how they can improve their business with blockchain and uh, they try to understand how they can use that technology. But um, I think Bitcoin and blockchain already changed the world. How? This is some interesting statistics about development of blockchain projects. You can find here a lot of blockchain projects and here you can find the information about how many lines of uh, code per day changed for each project. For example, in Ethereum, per one day, there are 53 commits. It's 53 changes in the code of Ethereum. Or I work at Waves, and in Waves, 65 per day. And per year, more than 8,000. What is commit? It's like uh, atomic change of code. It's just not a single line of code. It's just like uh, atomic change in the behavior of the blockchain, for example. So uh, the main idea behind this picture, behind this table, is that Bitcoin already changed the world. Blockchain already changed the world. And developers, every day, they write a lot of code, mostly for free. They collaborate with each other, and they work together. That's how blockchain changed the world. But Let's go a little bit further. What was the main idea of uh, Bitcoin? The main idea of Bitcoin was to replace banks. Yes, replace banks with code. That was the main idea. Let's take like institutional things like bank and replace it with code. Let's give people ability to have their own money. They have to be uh, they have to uh, not just like see the numbers in their mobile app. They have to be able to send it, to do everything they want to. That's the main idea behind Bitcoin and maybe some other blockchains. So before it was a bank, now it's just like a piece of software. That was the main idea of Bitcoin. And the main conceptual thing we have to understand is that consensus, as a technical term, is for rules, but without rulers. That was the main idea of Bitcoin. 
And I, I will not talk about did they uh, reach that goal or not, uh, did Bitcoin replace the bank, the banks or not, I think everybody can answer by himself. But I want to talk about the governance of uh, development, like in blockchain projects. And what was the main idea behind replacing banks? Just three points. Why? Why do they want to replace banks as an institutional thing? First, there should be no single point of failure. There should be no single point of truth. We should not trust to anybody. And the last thing, let anyone be separate and independent. Blockchain gave this opportunity to all of us. Everybody can write a code, everybody can change the Bitcoin, everybody can change his own bank. Everybody can be his own bank. That was the main idea. And this is the main thing in this table, I think. Uh, how many developers work for each of these projects? There are a lot of developers. And as I already said, most of them work for free. They just want to make good things. They, what was the goal of decentralization? Let's let anyone be separate and independent. But at the same time, they work together. That's the paradox of blockchain. And that's how blockchain changed the software development. Blockchain showed us that even for free, we can work together, we can do better things, but at the same time, we can keep separate and independent. Sounds cool, sounds cool for developers, but I think that there are just a few developers in this uh, room. And that's the main problem, that's the main issue of blockchains right now. For developers, blockchain reached its goal. It's goal, yeah. I think we have to agree with it. For example, uh, free software MSI Richard Stallman, uh, he, he said that we can do better than Bitcoin. And he just wants to take part in development of uh, blockchain. And he's not alone. There are a lot of examples. Developers, they want to make blockchain, they want to collaborate, they want, they want to work together. And BitTorrent's creator, etc, uh, etc. Et there are a lot of people, they want to work together, they want to improve the technology. But what's the issue? One small issue. Firstly, I have to ask one question. Who read the Bitcoin white paper? Can you raise your hands, please? One, two, three, three. Three of you read the four. Four of you read the white paper of Bitcoin. Okay, cool. Next question. How many pages in the Bitcoin white paper? Six, two, three, one, four, five, six, two, three, one, nine. Nine, right. There is just nine pages, only nine pages, and just eight if we exclude the references. Just eight pages. Why you didn't read the Bitcoin white paper? That's the main question. Why? It's really easy to read. It's really easy to understand. There is only one page with some kind of formulas or mathematics. Only one page. Other seven pages that are really easy to understand. Why didn't you read the Bitcoin white paper? What's the answer to this? I do not have, honestly. And I'd like you to think about it. Why you didn't read the Bitcoin white paper? It's not so technical. It's more about concepts. There are no, like, I don't know, they're just like what, only one piece of code. And even, I think, anybody can understand it. And this is the main issue of blockchain interest, industry right now. That all of us, we want to implement a blockchain, we want to use a blockchain, we try to find out how to use a blockchain, but we didn't understand how it works. Really? Let me tell you one story. Uh, there was uh, uh, one um, like scientific uh, research about planes. Um, as far as I remember, in the United States, they took some kind of reports about plane crashes, and they gave it just like to a random person. They read that reports about plane crashes. And what was the result? that research. 
that almost everybody after that reports tried to avoid planes. They just said, okay, I will not to fly anywhere anymore. I will just, I don't know, take a car and you drive the car. Sounds reasonable, right? If planes crash, we, we should crash, we should just use cars. But there is one important thing. Planes 1,000 times safer than cars. It's just a statistic. 1,000 times safer than cars. And people just say, okay, I will use car. And they just, it's not so logic if you know that statistic, right? But what was the reason? Why people decided to switch to car? What was the reason? I think the answer is really easy. They understand how car works. They think that they drive that car. They think that they control that car. But planes, they don't understand how it works. It's some piece of magic. I don't know how it works. I just want to go there. I don't control it at all. And I just have to sit there and die. That's their reason to switch to car. Why I told you about this research? It's almost the same in blockchains right now. Why? A lot of us hear that Bitcoin price is going down. There are a lot of vulnerabilities in smart contracts. Ethereum, it's bad, it's so slow. There are a lot of issues with scalability, etc., etc., etc. Usual people, they hear a lot of bad news about blockchain as a technology. At the same time, they don't understand how it works. So what, do, what will they do? Sure, they will not use it. They will avoid playing, and they will use a car, even if it's worse. That's why I ask you to read technical things, to read technical papers. They're not so technical usually. Really, they're easy to understand. They're just some kind of concepts, and it can help you to show people how they can use the blockchain, for example. This is just like a picture about magic. I'm a developer and advocate ways. Most of them developer. I develop a lot of things, just like proof of concepts and some kind of that. At the same time, I'm an advocate, not in legal terms, but in technical terms. I talk with a lot of projects who try to use the blockchain. And usually my first question is, why do you want to use the blockchain? Why? I think it's a reasonable question. The answer is very weird sometimes. Sometimes people just say, we just want to earn a lot of money. We use a blockchain to earn a lot of money. Sounds stupid, right? Very dumb. Another answer, we just want to be on the hype. Again, it's a stupid question. And why? Why? Why they just want to be on the hype? because they don't understand the main concept of blockchains. Um, another story, I'm just fast today, really. Um, so another story about, not about blockchain, I think, uh, just about, just to think about. Um, I think all of you know Satoshi Nakamoto. He's the inviter of uh, Bitcoin. Yeah. Uh, Bitcoin, and he wrote the nine papers. He just published it. He worked on the uh, first uh, Bitcoin uh, miner, etc., etc. Now, just imagine one situation, one just small situation. I think we have to agree that he's an expert in cryptography. He's an ex expert in computer, in uh, IT, and uh, let's imagine one situation. Is he, for example, sits in the bar with his colleagues or friends, and one of his friends asked him, Satoshi, or his real name, what do you think about Bitcoin and blockchain? He can't say that he's the, it's my project, I invented the blockchain and Bitcoin. He can't say so, right? At, at least he didn't, still didn't. But I think he is a very, 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 I have to say that he's so good that he changed the whole industry, software development. But at the same time, 
He can't say that it's me. I changed the world. He can't say so. Maybe he's or dead. He, sorry. Maybe he's dead. Maybe he's dead, but I hope he's alive. But why I'm telling you this story? Just think about it. One person changed the world. One person. He didn't say his name. We do not know who is Satoshi Nakamoto, but he changed the world. Now, all of us, we want, all of us, really, a huge amount of people who just want to use blockchain as a hype. Do you really think that Satoshi made blockchain just for our, I don't know, entertainment or some kind of like, just to raise a lot of money? Do you think so? Should we think more about technology and less about hype? Sure, yes. Can we think less about hype, less about uh, just use blockchain anywhere, that just try to find, I don't know, the, how, how to implement that uh, blockchain in our business, etc., etc. I think we have to focus more on technologies. At least even if, even you are, if you are not a developer, if you are a programmer, you can read white papers, uh, not so hard. You can understand what's in white papers, you can understand technology. And let's do it, let's do it just for Satoshi Nakamoto and his situation. That's my main point of this presentation. Um, one more thing. Yeah. Read the Bitcoin white paper, please. Just eight pages, and at least you will understand seven of them. Just read the Bitcoin white paper. I ask you to do it today. Thank you. Blockchain is about clients for it, blockchain is about documentation for it, blockchain is about integrations, libraries, etc. etc. And they all of these developers they work not only on blockchain itself, they work on clients, they work on uh, documentation, they work on a lot of things around the blockchain as technology. We can say that it's a whole blockchain, but not only the I don't know consensus mechanisms in the blockchain. That's why we need so many developers. And at the same time, mostly, I think the majority of these developers, they're like uh, uh, scientists. They love to experiment, they like to do something new, and that's why they do it, just for experiment. That's it. Yeah. Hello. I'd like to mention about uh, safety concern about um, cryptocurrency. As we understand, there are not any control uh, source of uh, this currency, source of this money. Say that. Um, do you have any comment on this? Uh, how to control, it? for example, uh, drug dealer, dealer or guns, uh, any kind of the crime uh, groups can benefit that kind of sources? Do you have any uh, I will uh, answer for this question with one question. How, or for now, do we control cash? Can we control it? Is it possible to control cash? It's, it's not the uh, same as similar situation because Why not? we carry to uh, withdraw cash money and need effort also to deliver cash money. It's also effort. For example, in terrorist organization located some uh, Middle East country to transfer them uh, cash money. It's difficult from Germany. But, but it's possible. Germany. But it's possible, and they do it every day. They we we have to admit they do it every every single day. But they get the, that cash. They get everything they want, and it's possible right now. Uh, you, 
regular right. It's not uh, uh, completely controllable, but it's a, it's give chance uh, authority to find the source of this. But cryptocurrency uh, give brilliant opportunity uh, to trans transfer that kind kind of the criminal money without any problem. And so any point of the uh, person. Let, let me explain one thing. Uh, when we talk about some kind of criminal and terrorists or that kind of uh, bad things, maybe, maybe they, criminal, uh, illegal, 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 illegal things. things. When we talk yeah. about illegal things, we have to understand. Okay, we have cryptocurrencies. They somehow, I don't know, illegal uh, people. They can use that cryptocurrency. Right now, they also can use cash. Why we just didn't throw cash away? Why? What's the answer for this question? Just because we can't do it. Right? Uh, but at the same time, wh why we can't do it? Because cash gives us a lot of uh, interesting and necessary abilities to do, right? Cryptocurrencies, same. Cryptocurrencies give us a lot of interesting, interesting things we can do with it. But at the same time, there are some cons, of course. And we, how we can handle it, how we can uh, try to make it more difficult for illegal, for illegal uh, entities to work with cryptocurrencies. Yes, we can try to do it. There are a lot of uh, ideas about it. Even Bitcoin, it's traceable. You can think that uh, it's not traceable, but it's traceable. We, we can find the source of Bitcoin. It's possible. At the same time, there are technologies like, I don't know, Zcash, they are not traceable. Yeah, but it, it's traceable. We can try to use traceable cryptocurrencies, at least. Why not? The, there is no just like uh, silver bullet for this problem, yeah, right. But uh, I, I just can't understand. We we have to understand blockchain. It's not a uh, silver bullet. We can't solve all problems just with blockchain. Blockchain makes easier some uh, bad things. Okay, we can think about it and we can make it uh, harder again. Like as I was to say, just like trace the I don't know Bitcoin transactions. We can't do it. Why not? That's the question. That. Sorry, I have another question. Yeah. So regarding um, the traceability, so if is it still possible to do the money laundering? Because what I understood, you can pay uh, any amount of cash to miners, and they can buy your um, cryptocurrency, and that will not be traceable. Is that correct or? I didn't get it, so I'm not sure that I got it right because um, you should not pay to miners. No. No. How do you, how do you buy the cryptocurrency then? Ah, you you pay to owners, and not just like miners. Yeah. Uh, you can pay to any owner some cash, and you can get cryptocurrency, right? And it will not be traceable. In, in a sense. Because it's a cash, right? Yeah. You can trace the cash also, yeah. So. Money, money laundering is still possible. Yes, and right now it's also possible. Even without cryptocurrencies, we have term money laundering. You can launder money with, uh, I don't know, with a car or house as well. Just like, no, no, yeah. this, this I understand, but my it. understanding is that it has been banned, for example, in China because of the money laundering possibilities and that terrorism and other <coughs> dirty businesses can be uh, Basically sponsored for Satan. Yeah, um, because yeah, it cannot be basically, you know, it can be sponsored by. Yes, you're right, and we can we can do almost anything with it. Okay. okay. Then, yeah, there's another question. Uh, first of all, thank you very much for a nice and interesting presentation. Uh, my, my question is regarding the technology itself. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm following and researching this blockchain technology and uh, I know that it faces uh, some problems with scalability to uh, make it worldwide used uh, uh, fund, foundation for finance, uh, financial system. Uh, how do you see any uh, updated technologies in the horizon which is coming and uh, maybe will replace blockchain or will be developed version of the blockchain? Uh, 
Okay, I see. Um, let's say so. Uh, in Waves, for example, we have uh, about 1,000 transactions per second. And for us, the throughput of blockchain scalability is not an issue at all. We just don't have so many transactions in our blockchain. Even in uh, Bitcoin, there are no so many transactions for now. So usually we think about, oh, blockchain, there are a lot of issues with scalability, we have to handle it somehow, we have to do something with it. But honestly, we do not have a problem. There, are, right now in production, in waves, there are more than 1,000 transactions per second, and we just don't have so many users. So for now, it's, for, as I can see, it's not so, so big, big problem. For Bitcoin, maybe, because there are just seven transactions per second. But in waves, why, why are we so fast? Because there was a paper called Bitcoin NG, Bitcoin Next Generation. Uh, it was a paper in 2015, as far as I remember. And they just didn't implement it. They said that we'll not implement it right now, it's not necessary. We did. We implemented that white paper, that concept. And now we have more than 1,000 transactions. If Bitcoin uh, will see some kind of problems with scalability, I think that they also can implement it. So there are a lot of researches, there are a lot of interesting things around uh, scalability. There are uh, another consensus mechanisms like our depots. I'm not sure it's a blockchain, but anyway, uh, there are a lot of interesting things uh, we can do if we will face that problem. Yeah. Last question. Thanks for your interesting presentation. I want to ask one question. You say that, for example, people can track this corn, but cannot track this fish. What's the difference? Uh, it's not well, they cannot, to, for example, track other um, coins. Uh, it's a little bit complicated to explain it right now because it's more technical stuff. Um, I'll try to explain like in Zcash there is a technology called Zcash Narcs, and you can hide all previous transactions with that coins. That's the main idea behind it. And there are two major cryptocurrencies, Zcash and Monero. Uh, they give you the ability to hide the incomes of your transactions. And it's just like uh, some uh, technical things. We can go deeper, but I think it's not a proper time and proper place to talk about it. Maybe we can talk uh, coffee break or... If, if you're interested in I will have some kind of uh, workshop today for about two and a half hours about blockchains from the basics to... We will write our... In the end, we will write our smart contract. So if you're interested in technology, we, you can just take part in that uh, workshop. Thank you, Nan. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you, guys.